Hi again. Hi again. <laughs> Almost, we were like that close to being on time. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we're one day we'll get it. We're getting there. You guys, today we're gonna talk about not wasting your money as a new grower. But first, I'm gonna say thank you for liking this video. Thank you guys. And subscribing and hitting that notification button just so you know that when we drop a new vid, we, you guys are- New vids live. It's always a party. There. Whenever a new vid drops, we have a premiere and the whole community is, is awesome. The Hygen fam, we love you guys. Thanks for showing up for the new videos. So make sure you guys follow along. So please hit that like button. It really does help the channel. Heck yeah. Today we're gonna be talking about what I wished I would have known right. to not waste my money on as a new grower and what to maybe invest my money more wisely in. Yeah, because um, we definitely got a lot of stuff in the beginning. Um, you know, just buying stuff for what we thought was cheap or a better deal. Uh, and just to come find out that it didn't last or it wasn't really a good investment. And in the long run, you're definitely gonna save money by just carefully thinking over what you're putting into your grows. Yeah, so um, this is just a little list that we kind of came up with that we kind of wish we would have known when we first started growing and we hope that maybe some of you appreciate it. And save you guys some dollars. Yeah, we like that. We always love to yeah. save in dollars. Speaking of saving dollars, if you guys didn't know, go to Hygen.com and check out the Hygen hookup section. We have tons of deals and discounts to save you guys money tons. on all kinds of products, lights, gears, newts, everything. Um, and some of those codes help the channel out, so it does go to help support what we do, but you guys save money too, so it's a win-win, and we really appreciate it if you guys check that out. The first thing that comes to mind when I think of don't waste your money save as a new the money. grower, the very first thing, and I'll say this to anybody, CO2. CO2. You guys probably see so many people talking about CO2. Now, there are some reasons why I believe that as a new grower, especially with smaller grows, I don't believe that you need to worry about CO2 unless A, you're super dialed in on your grow or B, have a very large grow where it would need that extra CO2. So, um, yeah, exactly. Like if you're not growing at the top tier level and really maximizing your genetics potential and you're running at a very high light intensity over a thousand par, and chances are, as a new grower, you're not gonna be to that level and your plant's really not gonna benefit from CO2 at, yeah. at that stage. I wish somebody would have definitely said, hey, you know, maybe that's something that you wanna look into when you're more dialed in as a grower. Yeah. And why, I mean, we've actually done tests and I mean, you can kind of yeah. embellish we, a little on so that. So we had the Inkbird controller and starting out like most new growers, we're like, oh, gotta have CO2 for the plants to do good. And, and if you see any issue, you're like, well, maybe it's the CO2. It's not. If you're a new grower, just learning, it's not CO2 ever. It's promise, I promise you it's not. Definitely not a CO2 issue. And then after we got the Inkbird controller, um, we could actually measure the PPMs in the tent. Uh, and for, for the plants that were growing, our ambient PPM in the tent in the basement was 750, like 50, 720 PPM. Ambient, and that was a ambient. real eye opener. Yeah, and that's like already a high level. And then measuring when we got like the mushroom bags and some other CO2 products, it made virtually no impact on the ambient PPMs inside the tent. We actually produced more CO2 just standing in the tent for 10 minutes than the bag did over months. Yeah, uh, period of exactly. Time. And so I guess moral of the story, if you're in your tent for more than 10 minutes every day or a couple days, just breathing, you're it's gonna launch your PPMs over 1700 in a matter of minutes. And it takes a long time to, for the, to vent out of your tent anyway. So mm -hmm. you really don't need to invest in CO2, save your money. It's, you know, unless you're growing at the top tier, which if you're new, you're probably not. <laughs> Save your money. <laughs> agreed, agreed. I've wasted, let me tell you, tons of money on it, so. Yeah, we've definitely gone through some mushroom bags. The second thing that comes to mind for me when I'm thinking about don't wasting your money as a new grower, it's not necessarily not wasting your money, but more investing it more wisely. Um, and that is pH pens. <sighs> Been burned by some bad pH pens. You know, you know what I'm talking about, them yellow Amazon ones? Don't even, don't do it. They might work for you in the beginning. Don't do it. But you're gonna end up spending a lot more money replacing those than just investing in a really good one that's gonna last you. Yeah, and we've really liked the um, Apira pens. They have been absolutely great. Easy to calibrate. Yes. 
so many positives. They take regular batteries like triple A's instead of some crazy watch battery. They're waterproof, replaceable probe. So if you break it, you can just get a new probe for it instead of replacing the whole one. Like it's worth it to get a better one in the beginning. That's going to save you money in the long run. Cause we went through, I, I can't even tell you how many like cheapo ones off Amazon that were just like, oh, we're saving some, mm -hmm. some bucks on this $10 one and then have it. And you also cannot calibrate a lot of those. Yeah. Or I just don't trust the calibrations. Like I would calibrate that yellow one and that thing was all over the place. It, it really was, was. Screw I had some growth screwed up from it from just being wildly off and saying it was on like save yourself and, and your grow, especially since you're investing uh, in your grow. Yes, and as a new grower, um, understanding how pH is affecting your grow is very important. I use my pH pen every, every time I give my uh, my plants water. And now that I have a great, uh, great one that also does soil, uh, that's something I measure as well. I wouldn't trust that with something that wasn't reliable. Definitely guys, the Apira pens, if you're interested, we have a discount code, saves you 20%. Check out highgen.com, save you some money, but they're definitely worth it. Investing in a, in a more quality one that's gonna stay calibrated. You can easily get batteries for, it's waterproof and has a replaceable probe. It's, it's gonna pay off in the long run and it really is a vital part of your grow um, because having your pH being way off or wildly off can drastically affect your plants. You know, really not any style of grow from hydro to soil, mm -hmm. like pH can be pretty important. Oh, she's making it. Audie is like, I'm part of this vid now. She's making an exit. While we're on the topic of putting your money to better use when you're a new grower, what what else do you think that they should the, not waste their money this on? Is, uh, this is from hands-on experience exhaust fans. Don't even waste, I'm not just saying this because they're a channel sponsor, but AC Infinity, the definitive exhaust fan for homegrowers and tents, I feel like AC Infinity, they're just the best. They're the quietest, they have the best performance and the best features. Honestly, their new ones are awesome. App control, tracking, DPD readouts. Completely changed the game for my yeah. for my grow space. Um, and I wish I would have been introduced to this way sooner than I actually was. So yeah. um as a new grower, I would have loved to have the information. Yeah, because we've definitely had um, fans, you know, you can get the cheap ones on Amazon and really you, you get those and they're really loud. They usually don't have any kind of ramping control on them. So it's just set it and it's at a single speed all the time. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about the ACs is you can set the set points in the app and it will ramp between your parameters based on you know, your humidity or your temperature in the tent or, or both. Yeah. Like there's a lot you can do with them and they're really not that much more than just like the cheapo fans. So like, it's not even worth buying those cheapo fans, having them, you know, the motor burn out in a year and you're buying another one anyways. You know, the AC is a little bit more, but ask anybody in the community. They, they are, will. they are proven. Yeah, we, they will 100%. last you. And um, they're just qual, it's quality and you're not gonna have to continue to spend money on getting new things because this one, they they will last. Yeah, they're definitely a great brand, but there's other ones out there too. So if you guys know another great brand, definitely comment below, let us know. Oh, yeah. uh, we do have a discount code for AC Infinity, works on their website or Amazon. Uh, use code HIGEN, save yourself 15%. You know, all the AC Infinity's products and they have some great ones out there, guys. So definitely look into the exhaust fans. That's one, yeah. that's a money saver. and. And they're quieter. That's what I love the best because I, I'm by it constantly. So not having it be as loud or Well, I've tried rampant. other exhausts. Uh, and like he said, from experience, um, having a quality exhaust system and it doesn't have to be AC Infinity. You may have another quality exhaust system. Um, the point is don't skimp on that. That's something that I think is very important in your environment. Lights is a big cost savings and there's a lot of factors I feel like to think about. And we kind of touched on this in one of our other videos about kind of choosing the best light style for your grow. You know, there is a balance of saving money and then making sure you get a light that's gonna work for your grow area and get you good coverage. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, do you want full coverage for the whole area or do you want to be able to have zones where you could have a higher output for maybe a plant and flower and a lower output for maybe seedlings and veg. Do you want a multi-light setup? So you could definitely save a lot of money. 
looking at the different options and thinking about how you want to grow. It's definitely something that you don't want to skimp on because for me, it's part of the environment and your environment is the most important part about where your, where your grow is. So the light is one of the biggest parts of your environment. So um, I would do your research and make sure you're getting the best one for your grow instead of just getting the first one um, that you can get your hands on. In yeah, my opinion. definitely. We've seen great results at Vipar Spectra that we've been purchasing and then running um, pretty much since the beginning of the channel. We've had some of their lights in the tents, you know, great quality. There's a lot of manufacturers out there. So make sure to kind of do your homework, take the look at the performance of the lights, the area you're trying to light, you know, you'll find something that's probably going to fit your budget. And usually the cheaper it is, you know, the cheaper, the quality, the performance will, it might be lacking, but you know, the brands are pretty good all around these days. The last thing that really comes to mind things to don't waste your money. Save the money. I honestly, I was resistant to this one myself. So, um, and actually you guys have probably seen, but I started reusing my soil and I really, really wished that I would have started reusing my soil from the beginning. Cause I would have saved so, so hundreds much. of dollars. You guys, I'm not in, For that's, sure. that's not even an exaggeration. Um, I've spent on dirt. <laughs> so that is just something that I wish that somebody would have, you know, and you know what? Somebody did tell me, tons of people told me to do that yeah. in the beginning. And I was so resistant and I, it's probably one of my biggest regrets to not do as a new grower. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's great, especially for somebody new purchasing soil isn't as bad because it's pre-amended and it's usually within some kind of tolerance that's reasonable for starting your plants. Um, so amending it and, and starting kind of your own mix might be a challenge at first, but also think about, yeah, you're going to buy bag soil in the beginning, probably. Mm -hmm. And then you're, you know, when it comes down to the end of the plant, now you can save that and start mixing it and reusing it. It's definitely something to think about. And it's a huge cost savings. Obviously, you know, you're not buying soil, soil yeah. every grow. You're not having to get rid of soil every single grow or where do you dispose of it? Yeah, um, it, um, it actually took out a lot of different um, variables for me. So um, just something to think about as a new grower and I uh, definitely beneficial to you yes, in the yes. long run. So, yeah. Learn how to make your own soil, then then you're in control and it's cheaper. <sighs> And if you guys uh, are interested in maybe knowing how to reamend your soil, we do have a vid and I have tons of comments on there. Um, so much knowledge. So much knowledge, you guys. Check it out. Yeah, we're definitely gonna do some follow-ups too on what we've found out so far on reusing our soil and how it's been going. So definitely stay tuned, guys. Tons of content. Yes, and thanks again for hitting that like button. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Make sure to smash that like and hit the subscribe button. You can check us out on Instagram at Hi Again for all kinds of behind the scenes photos and reels. Check out our Discord where you can share pictures of your grows, talk with other people in the Hi Again fam, and have all kinds of fun. But thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.